If you have 3D embossing folders and you need some birthday cards, then today I've got the video for you. I'm going to share two different ways to add watercolor to your embossed images. It's time for another Take Two with Therese at Alter New, and I'm sharing two cards using this Rose Bellevue 3D embossing folder and it is divine, but you could use any embossing folder that you already have. And I want to share my process. This is a large rose and I have a piece of watercolor cardstock and I've already chosen some paints from the artist's watercolor set and popped them on a palette beside my image. I'm using a wet on wet technique and a large brush because this is such a huge rose. It's a six by six inch embossing folder and I need to cover the area where that rose is going to be. So I've laid down the clean clear water onto the watercolor cardstock and then I'm picking up some of the color with my brush and just literally just dropping it in. Anyone can do this. You just need to make sure that you choose colors that are going to play well together and not turn into a muddy brown color or allow drying time between each layer of color. If you're impatient like me, then you could certainly come in with your heat tool. This one's awesome because it has two levels of heat and I use the low one. The embossing folder itself has four leaves, 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 images. And I just want to roughly know where they are. I'm trying not to overthink this. So I literally just am using two different colors of green, a lighter one, and then dropping a darker color over top on top of the wet paint. If you're not sure where the colors are going to mix well together, you can always test them on a scrap piece of paper. Because I'd already sort of organized the colors around the embossing folder, it was easy to line them up roughly and then run them through my die cutting machine. You need to use a sandwich that's going to work with these 3D embossing folders for your particular machine because each one will be slightly different. And hello, <laughs> how pretty is that? I'm going to take this a little step further. And I have made a very similar card to this once before and that's why I'm here with you sharing this today because I had a lot of questions on how I did it. My initial card I don't remember coming back in and adding extra color like I am here but I didn't add a lot of color for my initial wash. One thing to be aware of is that as the color dries back it will lighten and I wanted this to have a little bit um, sort of richer tones. Now I've got a couple of hints I'm going to be sharing with you so stay tuned. I'm going to show you how to fix the image because if you add too much water to an image you can lose some of the depth from the embossing folder and that's what I didn't like about this finished embossed image. It just didn't have enough depth. So I'm actually picking up some of my paint from the palette with a dryer brush and adding some darker colors like in the uh, petals where they meet in the center of the flower, dropping some darker color in and then blending it out so I don't end up with any of the rough edges. This is a great way to add some more definition and mix different colors if you want to especially because it's a little bit drier the paint does dry quicker although if you do add too much water just be aware that watercolor can reactivate. I'm going to set this aside to dry for a minute and work on my second panel. So last time I did my coloring let it dry and then embossed the cardstock. This time what I've done is I've grabbed a piece of the watercolor paper and then done the embossing first. I want to actually paint on top of the embossed image and I thought it'd be fun to use gouache this time to do that. And it's a little bit different to regular watercolors. It's more opaque and has kind of a chalky finish. You can actually water it right down and get a very similar transparent look that you do get with watercolors so it is very diverse in that way but if you want that sort of almost a thicker paint look 
um, this is a great option and you can actually use the two of them together in different techniques and it's a lot of fun to do so what I've done here is I've actually added some white to the baby pink wash you will be surprised at exactly how much paint you do need it's not like a regular watercolor in that respect you actually need to get a little bit more especially if you're going to pre-mix a color like I have here you want to make sure that you have more than you need because you're probably not going to be able to recreate the exact same color a second time so I am using some water here but keeping the paint itself um, fairly chalky looking and coming in on the where the petals meet in the center of the rose and adding the paint there first so that's going to be my darkest section and then watercolor adding some water and sort of thinning it out to the edge of the petals to so give them that lighter look and add a little bit of depth and def definition to this embossing folder there's not a lot of water I'm adding here so I'm not losing I know it kind of might be a bit hard to see but I'm not losing too much definition on the embossed image I wanted to come in and add a second color to add a little bit more depth and this time I've got the coral color and it's a I wasn't really sure how it was going to go with the baby pink but I love how it looks in the end and because this is a little bit darker I am actually focusing this more on the shaded areas or the darker areas of the rose bloom. So these artist squashes are fairly new to Alter New and they are such beautiful, bright, fun colors. I couldn't wait to play with them a little bit more. The greens, I don't have a black gouache, so I do recommend if you have um, the gouache set from Alter New, I would recommend that you buy a tube of basic white and black gouache so that you can either lighten or darken the shades of color that are in the set all right so here's the tip or one of the tips I was telling you about I felt that I'd lost quite a bit of the definition from this embossing folder when I added all that extra paint and water so simply just pop it back into the folder itself almost like a puzzle piece you'll feel it kind of click in and then run it through your die cutting machine to re-emboss the image you may want to add a thin shim you may not need to you can always come back and do that but it did look at that it makes such a difference and another tip my one of my favorites this is a uh, a2 window on some cardstock and I love using this to try and work out what portion of an image I want to use so I can use it either portrait or landscape I can angle it if I want to try and work out what sort of section of an image that I want to use it's one of those things that costs you a piece of cardstock I highly recommend it and if you've got a certain size of card that you like to make then make one that suits the cards that you make the most all right so I've used some of the ultra sticky tape because of the texture that the embossing has added I wanted something that I knew was going to hold I wanted the rose to be the star of the show in these cards today so I have just added a simple enjoy sentiment I think this is a beautiful card for a birthday you can change it up to suit whatever occasion suits you but birthday cards are always needed in my stash I don't know about you and this is the fancy enjoy die and I laid I think I might have laid it up about five times just with some liquid glue and I use liquid glue to attach it to the front of the card as well because of the texture of the embossing as well so I want to keep the sentiment very simple again on my second card and I don't know if you've seen this set before but it's called the one go greetings stamp and die and basically it is it's just that you stamp it out once I'm using some embossing ink and pure white embossing powder on some jet black cardstock and with one stamp I get all of these sentiments and then it also has a coordinating die which 
cuts them all out in one go. <laughs> it's just such a fun idea. And now I've got a whole heap of sentiments ready to go in one go. <laughs> all right, so I have decided to do this second Rose Bell view in the landscape style and popped up my sentiment added a couple of gems and there is a different look with the two watercolors I do find if I want to do the washer color and then emboss that works really well but was very impressed with how this rose turned out by painting after doing the embossing but how pretty this rose bell view is stunning and I've linked the other card that I've made that is very similar in the description below. And I'd like to know in the comments below which one is your favourite and if you did like today's techniques it'd be great if you could click on the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. I've linked a couple more videos sharing some more fun techniques with you and I look forward to seeing you there. Till next time, happy paper crafting! Bye!